hearts this morning to give Jesus all the praise. Let Him take all the credit. Hallelujah. Help us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Shiki ando sanda korobo sanda. Oh, hallelujah. Let's sing this song all over the world. Let's clap along, amen. All over the world. As the prophecy would be, hallelujah, all over the world. There's a mighty revelation of the coming of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea, all over the church, the Spirit is moving. All over the church. As the prophet say would be, hallelujah, all over the church. There's a mighty revelation of the coming of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea, deep down in my heart, the Spirit is moving. As the prophet said would be Deep down in my heart There's a mighty revelation Of the coming of the Lord As the waters cover the sea Deep down in my heart Deep down in my heart The Spirit is moving Deep down in my heart the prophet say would be hallelujah deep down in my heart there's a mighty revelation of the coming of the Lord as the waters cover the sea all over the church the spirit is moving all over as the prophet say it will be, hallelujah, all over the church. There's a mighty revelation of the coming of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea, celebrate Jesus, celebrate, celebrate Jesus, celebrate. Jesus celebrate Jesus celebrate Celebrate Jesus celebrate He has risen He has risen He has risen And He lives Forevermore, He has risen. He has risen. Come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. Raya Khan, Jesus, Raya Khan, Hallelujah. Raya Khan, Jesus, Raya Khan. Raya Khan Jesus Raya Khan Jesus Raya Khan 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 Dia bangkit Dia bangkit Dia bangkit dan hidup selamanya. Dia bangkit, dia bangkit. Marilah rayakan, marilah rayakan kebangkitan. 
Kepadalah Tuhan Let's give a big clap to the Lord this morning Hallelujah Shikiyanda Sunday Lord we worship you this morning Hallelujah You are worthy to be praised Sakaraba Sunday Hallelujah We worship you Hallelujah, Robo Sunday. Hallelujah. Anda Karaba Sunday. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass, whatever lies before me, let me be singing. Let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His soul. Name sing like never before, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. You're rich in love, you're rich in love, and you're slow to anger. Your name is great. And your heart is kind For all your goodness I will keep on singing Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship Your holy name You're rich in love And you're slow to your name is great and your heart is kind for your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the lord So worship, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship Your holy name I worship Your holy name I worship I worship your holy name. Let's give a big clap to the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, as we stand before you this wonderful morning, we want to come before you, bringing our leaders in the fellowship, Master Great Mitchell, Master Joe Campbell, Pastor Alan Asir, 
all the area churches represented in this country, every pastor and family, evangelist, missionary, every disciple, church worker, members of the body of Christ. Uh, we pray, dear God, this morning uh, that you would shield our life and you begin to set your hedge around each and every one of us in this uh, time that we are in. And we want to bring our loved ones who do not know you, who have heard the gospel. We pray that the word that they have heard may go into their hearts and begin to bring conviction, revelation, of the goodness and the love of Jesus Christ in regard to their sin as well. This morning we bring those who have um, backslidden and we pray for their salvation. Uh, we pray that, dear God, you turn them back to yourself. We pray that you would whisper into their ears and remind them of your faithfulness and your goodness also expose to them the lie of the devil that lies to them about the world. The world is passing away. All that is in the world uh, reveal unto them that there's no future in the world except in Jesus Christ. I want to pray for this time of uh, C-19 that God, you would Accelerate your recovery, your, your speedy uh, works of healing and even putting a stop to all of it that uh, the church uh, can go back to normalcy and uh, we can function back to normality again. This morning, commit all of us unto you, those who are watching live stream as well in Jesus Christ most wonderful name we pray. Amen. Let's give a big clap to the Lord. Amen. You can turn around and just greet one another this morning in God's house. Thank you very much, uh, musician. Uh, so, I'd like to give you the church announcement. Uh, tonight, uh, it will be only live stream, and uh, there are seats in front. Yeah, James, can you help take away this, the things on the, yeah, put by the side there, by the side there, near the pillar there, on the, there, uh, put by the side, so they got seats here. So thank you, James. And uh, so tonight uh, we are continuing our uh, series of sermon about in between. We're living in in-between times, in between the birth of Christ and uh, His second coming, in, the, in between in the beginning, um, and the word Amen, which is uh, the last word in the Bible. Okay, So we're living in a time of uh, in-between. So... In the in-between time, uh, it's important how we conduct ourselves. So scripture tells us that, uh, that we have to conduct ourselves in a certain manner. And tonight, we're going to look at conducting ourselves as pioneers, as travelers, as passing through uh, this world. Okay? So when we were in Cambodia, we were there not to, we were just passing through that nation. We, we go there, we do what we are supposed to do, but our mind is in Malaysia. So likewise, while we are here, uh, as, as uh, um, hum, human beings, we are to always in our mind um, think that uh, heaven is our home, we are going home. So this time we are in, we just sojourn, passing through. So we want to look at that tonight, how to conduct ourselves. Wednesday at 8 p.m., 
will be also live stream service. And take note, there is no New Year Eve service. Okay, we come back for Sunday morning. Next Sunday morning, we will have Holy Communion, and um, the sermon for next Sunday morning uh, is "You're Not Alone." Amen. We are not alone. So whatever new variants that's coming up, um, the message is uh, we are not alone. Okay, so that will be next Sunday morning. And just want to just let you know that uh, Friday night uh, there was a big thunderstorm. Okay, lightning. I think there was a huge boom sound around where we were living, and uh, my house tripped, and uh, and one of the lights fused. And uh, yesterday, uh, myself and. Jordan came to, we bought a table for the back so that we can put everything nicely in order, okay? And there were a lot of wirings, there were a lot of cables behind and, and um, um, we've installed a new uh, computer um, system at the back. Um, but what happened was uh, that lightning kind of uh, fire, fry some of the things in the church. Thank God the computer is okay because it costs like $2,500. Uh, it didn't touch the computer, but what it did touch was it touched the cables, two cables called HDMI cable that run from the back to the front to the TV. And it fried the TV. Okay, Not in a way fry, but the TV doesn't work. It's just a two-week-old TV. <laughs> so we burned the TV, it's not working anymore. Um, the other TV is at the back, the bigger one. The Heia TV, that, that one also gone. So we found out that the reason why was uh, this building, I think, does not have what you call a lightning arrestor. Okay? So it's supposed to have a lightning arrestor. And uh, whenever there's a lightning, it arrests the lightning power so that it doesn't go and search into the other connection. So what happened was the splitter that split, we have CCTV, we have projector, we have TV, so split three things also got burned, okay, got fried. Okay, so splitter, two cables, um, this one, this one is under warranty, so I'm going to ask them to come and see. So, um, so what more? So two cables. Uh, what we need to get is two cables, one lightning arrestor a gadget, and also two more splitter, one for standby. Okay. So I ask you to pray for this because it happens many times. That's why there's no uh, songs. We cannot put up the songs. And uh, but if you want to uh, help to uh, contribute towards this thing you're most gladly uh, welcome to do so, okay? So the previous two months back, someone uh, paid, uh, gave a certain X amount of money and we managed to buy the cable and we managed to buy a half a table at the back, stainless steel table, so that uh, we can put everything in order, all right? So hopefully we will get it all done by the next few days. Anyway, uh, 1 Timothy 6, 17, as I was at the praying just now, uh, this verse came um, in 1 Timothy 6 about on this area of giving. And, um, and um, 1 Timothy 6, um, 17 um, to 19. It just just popped into my mind. Um, it says, Command those who are rich in this present age uh, not to be haughty, not to be proud, nor to trust. Don't trust in your riches, 
not just riches, in uncertain riches. Times are so uncertain, days we live in. But in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy, then it goes on to say, let them do good. That they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. And verse 19, storing for themselves, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. So to the rich, um, there's a commandment here from God that you are to place your trust in the living God. Okay? And also to be ready to give, willing to share, so that you will store up for yourselves a good foundation for the time to come. Amen. Let's bow our heads this morning and before we go to God's word and, and Brother Peter, we pray. Father God, thank you for the love and grace, Father. Father, we come here today with a cheerful heart. Bless these tithes and offering and we'll be used in the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Amen. Let's turn to the book of Corinthians this morning. Chapter 15. So this morning's sermon has a lot of scriptures. <laughs> so a lot of scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 45 to 48. Okay. It's not going to be a very long sermon, but there's a lot of scriptures there. And, uh, and um, so I ask you to keep your Bible uh, turning, open, so that we can uh, receive from what the scripture wants us to listen to. Verse 45 uh, I read, you stand to your feet and you, uh, you read 46. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, or the second Adam, became a life-giving spirit. Verse 46. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven, verse 48. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this word this morning. And Holy Spirit, help us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We... Uh, I want to welcome all of you back um, for this Sunday morning service and hope all of you have a good rest the last few days and as we bring this last Sunday uh, service morning to a close for the year uh, 2020, I would like to consider with you a sermon that has to do with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you recall, uh, this year, New Year Eve sermon was from James 4, verse 8. And, um, and that uh, sermon is drawn near to me and I will draw near to you. Okay. So that was the sermon for 2020 and I got um, a sticker made with that verse uh, stick outside the door. James chapter 4 verse 8 Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. And I believe it was, uh, was a um, timely 
um, scripture for this year, particularly with, with what is happening to the world um, this morning. Uh, but that New Year Eve sermon was not only for this year, but uh, every year to come until we go back to be with Him. Uh, God wants us to draw near to Him because He wants to draw near to you. Amen. He wants to be with you, near you. He wants to guide you. He wants to help you. And um, so is for uh, every other year that uh, we've been blessed with the opportunity to, to live uh, on earth. Now one of the songs that is, that is sung or that was sung during the time of Christmas is the song called Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And um, um, this, um, this song uh, uh, came from the book of Luke chapter 2 whereby the angels uh, uh, sang and um, which when it happens when the angels sing, it, when it happens, it happens very suddenly, which is one of the way God uh, caused or allow good things to happen. That is, uh, God at times caused things to happen very suddenly. All of a sudden, um, things begin to happen. And uh, when the angel begin to sing, it happened very suddenly, and Luke Chapter 2, 13 to 14 says, And suddenly uh, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. For this song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, it happens after an angel of the Lord had appeared to the shepherds in the field and have said to them these words be hell, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And then all of a sudden, okay, all of a sudden, the angel starts to sing. But anyway, because this song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, um, the original song is a very long song. Uh, we, on our part, we only sang or sing half of that song. But I would like to quote the last part of that song uh, to you for our sermon uh, this morning. For the composer for this song, in that song, make mention in the last part of that song two very interesting words about this unto you is born a Saviour, Christ the Lord. And those two words are the words second Adam, saying, Come, desire of nations, come. Fix in us thy humble home. Rise the woman's conquering seed. Bruise in us the serpent's hate. Adam's likeness now efface. Stem thy image. In this place, second Adam, from above, reinstate us in thy love. Adam's likeness, now efface, and then second Adam, from above. Adam likeness, or second Adam, is found in the text we have read, 1 Corinthians 15. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. 
the last Adam or the second Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, Adam. The second man from heaven. The second Adam is from heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are of heaven. The first man of the dust of the earth, the second man, second Adam, is from heaven. The second Adam, again, is from heaven and from above. And this second Adam is Jesus Christ. Okay. So Christ, our Savior, came into the world not only as the Son of God, but also he came as the second Adam. Now here, when Christ is referred as the second Adam, it is to say to us that Jesus Christ lived truly, lived genuinely in human form. Okay? He lived truly a human life. Though he is divine, though he is God. But when he took on the form of man, whatever he did, okay, in that three and a half years, or his entire life, or whatever was done in service, in his suffering, or even in his death, okay, is not only by uh, not by virtue of his divinity as God, but by virtue of his humanity as man. In that song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, it also says, Please be please as man with man to dwell. Please as man with man to dwell. Again, from the very start to the end. It is all lived out in the form of fully a human being. And that is why scripture refer him as the second Adam. Okay. And uh, saying again, verse 47, the first man is of the earth. The second man is the Lord from heaven. From heaven, he was sent down to earth to take on the form of the first Adam, to be fully human while on earth again from day one of his ministry, when he went into the temple in Luke 4, opened up the book of Isaiah and read in verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, Send me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the boat, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all them were in the synagogue, were fastened on him, till the day, he says in John 19, verse 30, after receiving the vinegar, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Now, as second Adam, in true human form, to live a life that is able to say in John 19, 30, at the end of the day, it is finished. He has to live a life okay, with the help of the Holy Spirit. To live a life of being an overcomer. Truly a human being he was. Though he is God, but he took on the form of a second Adam to be able to overcome. 
to be able to overcome temptation that comes against him. For we know he was tempted in every way, but yet did not sin. Been also Adam that is in a sense truly human, he cannot do it alone. Okay. He cannot do it by himself. He has to do it with the help or with the presence of the Holy Spirit with him. The difference between the first Adam and the second Adam is the first is from the earth, whereas the second is from above. But nevertheless, in terms of humanity, in true human form, they are both the same. And for Jesus to do what he has to do, to at the same time live a holy and just life, at the same time, to be able to finish and say on the cross, it is finished. He has to do it. He has to have the Holy Spirit upon him to do so. He must have the Holy Spirit with him to do it. For if not, he would not be able to do what he has been sent to do as the second Adam. In Luke chapter 4, when he went into the temple and opened the book of Isaiah, and he began to read in verse 18, listen to what he says to those who were there at that time. As he opened up the book of Isaiah, he began to say this to those who were there. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He had anointed me to preach. He had sent me to heal, to preach deliverance to the captive, to recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them not bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. When He stood and read those who are to those who are at the temple, which those words are from the book of Isaiah, he clearly directs their attention to the Holy Spirit, saying, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me. Those words that he spoke were not unheard words before, for it was already foretold in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord in Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord had appointed me. In fact, three times, including this in Isaiah 61, Isaiah says and foretold that Jesus, the Savior, shall have the Holy Spirit upon him. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 2, And they shall come forth, a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots. Speaking about Jesus, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The third time in the book of Isaiah is in 42, chapter 42, verse 1, which are the words of God the Father saying, Behold my servant whom I up my elect, in whom my soul delight, I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Jesus, he has the Holy Spirit upon him. Upon him and resting upon him, whatever 
way you want to word it, upon him or resting upon him, Jesus, the second Adam, conducts the affairs of the Father and conducts his life on earth in holiness and in an overcoming way, not as the second Adam only, but also together with the Holy Spirit as well. Luke chapter 1, 35, the answer from Gabriel to Mary when she asked how can what the angel says that she shall be when she had never had any relationship with any man the angels say the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore also that the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God from the very moment of Christ's conception the Holy Spirit rested upon him and even more so the Holy Spirit never left him throughout the rest of the gospel the Spirit served as Christ's inseparable companion one Christian writer, John Owen, even listed 10 stages of his inseparable companionship of the Holy Spirit and Jesus. So the Holy Spirit, from day one of Jesus' conception until the very last, the Holy Spirit was Jesus' companion, inseparable companion, all the way through. Okay? From the very beginning of his conception, right down to his very last uh, day on planet Earth. And this tells us this morning, if Jesus Christ needed the Holy Spirit to be with him from the very beginning until the very end, how much more you and I, how much more you and I need the Spirit of God to be with us all the way through until we go back home. Now, again, 